Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got a really interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza 31 Small. This knife was sent to me in combination with actually the larger one which I've got right here and we'll use as a size reference here in just a moment. Both of these knives were sent by at Spirited Blades on Instagram. That would be Spirited Whiskey or Ryan as I've often referred to him on this channel. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. Uh, he has sent a lot of knives for review on the channel. I very much appreciate it. In fact, it's, it's because of people like him that I'm able to continuously bring you guys daily content. So give him a follow if you get an opportunity. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me during this time. If you'd like to check out my Patreon and support me, get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, you can check out my Patreon down in the description. The support would mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Before we start, actually, if you want um, a really in-depth... Uh, opinionated, well, all of my opinions on all the changes, right? I'm still going to talk about the changes between the 21 and the 31, not as in-depth as my tw as my large 31 review. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can check out the large 31 review, but this is going to be a little bit faster than that one, considering I've already covered it in depth. Uh, overall length of this guy is coming in at seven inches. Blade length is coming, it's tilted a little bit. So the pocket clip does that. Uh, blade length is coming in just over three inches and cutting edge is coming in at about 2.9 inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. You can see this is absolutely a smaller knife. Not tiny, but small. Up against the uh, Spyderco PM2. PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case the Ritter Hogue. Uh, Ritter Hogue coming in at 8.1 inches overall. And last but not least, the closest size comparison I've got, the Spyderco Para 3s. Para 3s coming in a little bit longer at seven and a quarter. We should go ahead and just throw the 21, or I'm sorry, the 31 large in there. I'm going to do that a lot during this, guys. <laughs> 21 and 31. Um, coming in at, I believe these are 8.3 inches overall. So anybody wondering that hasn't seen the large and the small together, there you go. That's the size difference. This is the very first uh, smaller version that I've, that I've handled. Um, I believe there are subtle differences in the overall length of blade or length of body versus the original 21 um, but it's it's pretty minute and considering these are going to be the way that they are moving forward you just got the measurements so everybody could should kind of be on the same page there um very very cool let's go ahead and talk about action these uh some people said that their action feels different than their 21 i i don't know what that's all about in my experience, I've handled um, two Unumzans, uh, two, I'm sorry, I've handled a Sabenza 21 large three times now, um, or two times now, plus the new 31, um, and did I say Nkosi? I've had the Nkosi. Anyways, a lot of these, and they all feel exactly the same to me, other than the final lockout, but that's because of the addition of the ceramic ball interface now. Um, the, uh, the rest of the knife feels the same to me. These do sort of smooth out a little bit over time. It has that hydraulic glassy action we always talk about with Chris Reeve knives. Um, but these have a bushing pivot, which is an error I made in the 31. I said, the 31 review, I said that these, the, the action could be adjusted to your liking. That's actually not the case. That's the case on some other Chris Reeve knives because of the bushing system. You can crank it down all the way and it stays the same. I should have worded it differently. I guess what I, what I likely meant, uh, unless I was just being dumb in that review, um, is that the action will change a little bit over time, which is why you see some people thumb flick these out. This one's very new and it's not ready for that yet, but it, it does in some circumstances get that way. But the nice thing about the bushing pivot is you can crank it back down all the way and it further complements the system or the design of this, which is very easy uh, to assemble and disassemble. These come with the tools, so I won't be doing the hardware check. Ryan didn't send the tool with me, but I think most people know. Comes with a tool, they encourage you to take it apart, clean it, put it back together. Um, so it's it's extremely easy to do, and it always goes back together exactly the same way, at least in my experience, which is, you know, I've got quite a bit of experience taking these apart and putting them back together. I've got a lot of positive th things to say about that, obviously, so I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and talk about carry profile. We're going to go ahead and do the measurement of the blade stock here real quick. I believe they're actually the same thickness. Both the 31 and the uh, large and small are about 120 thousandths. 
Um, so this blade's not quite as tall, right? So there's less overall blade, both in length and height. But because of the deep hollow grind, for anybody wondering, does that mean it's thicker behind the edge? No, because the hollow grind's so deep, it comes down and gets straight long before it actually gets to the final cutting edge. So it's still, in my opinion, it's just as thin as the large one. The reason that they do that is so that as you're resharpening it over and over and over again, and the final cutting bevel is backing up, it doesn't quite get to that part of the blade where it starts to get thicker, you know, as, as soon as a typical hollow grind, uh, or especially like a flat grind or conventional uh, V grind, I guess. But anyways, um, yeah, there's t there's a lot less mass in this because it's it's um, not as tall, um, it's not as uh, long or anything like that. And then thickness up uh, against like the Para 3, it's much thinner overall height and length. It's much easier to carry um, than, you know, knives like the PM2 and Para 3, two knives that are very uh, awkward in carry profile, but nobody ever com uh, complains about. You know, there's no flipper tab there. So yeah, uh, ease of carry in that department is great. And then weight, you know, considering we are actually looking at completely unmilled titanium, which has always been the case with these guys, no milling or anything on the inside besides the relief cut. We are looking at a grand total of 2.96 or roughly three ounces, which is, you know, totally fine considering the overall length of the blade. This is a very, very easy knife to carry. It's also appropriate in a lot of settings. The only thing that kind of stinks is the fact that it's right at three inches or a little over three inches on blade. So it's going to make it illegal uh, not, not legal to carry in some areas. Did we cover everything? My goal is, uh, here recently is, is to get through that a little bit faster. Um, yeah, yeah, I think we did. I think we're good with that. So, um, anyways, changes between the 31, uh, and 21. There's no alignment hole, which is awesome. I hated that alignment hole, uh, aesthetically. It didn't cause a disadvantage in terms of utility, but it just, it didn't look right with the rest of the knife, so that's nice. There's some additional chamfering, apparently, around the outside. That's not something that I noticed, but for uh, people who did, you'll find that a nice, pleasant surprise. The pocket clip has a slightly different angle rather than resting directly on the frame lock. It now splits the difference, or almost splits the difference, between the frame and the actual frame lock. So some people consider that a benefit in terms of carry profile. In my opinion, it adds um, to the fact that, uh, or it adds a benefit to the fact that there is no over travel stop in this guy. So considering where I'm going to put my hands and where the pocket clip is positioned and the tension it's creating, um, you're less likely to actually bend that frame lock out, which I don't think is likely in the first place. So that's nice. And, nice. and like I said, uh, subtle differences potentially in overall length of body and blade. I couldn't confirm that, um, but it's, it's, it's slight if it's actually there. Um, other changes, I, unless I'm mistaken, I, I think that's about it. And then somebody else corrected me. The dates on the inside of these, um, would actually be not the month, like where it says right there, it says D 19. I think it's actually quarters or trimesters of the year. Anyways, this one was manufactured in late 2019. That's what I'm guessing there. But anyways, um, there's going to be a lot of different variants of this knife available. Um, the typical bead blasted titanium and tumbled blade is what you're seeing here. There will inevitably be an all monochromatic version like the uh, Sabenza 21 True North Knives Edition where they had two lugs instead of one. These only have one lug. Uh, they'll, they'll make left-handed versions that they don't right now, in which case the single lug will be on the other side and the frame lock will be on the appropriate left-hand side as well. Um, but the True North, True North Knives version that'll have a lug on each side and all the parts that are blue on this knife will uh, be silver, which is great. That's the version that I would prefer. I um, mean, then they'll have, of course, the inlaid versions. The, the new inlays on these guys look great. Partially shadow boxed, amazing. Uh, those, I think, generally have silver lugs and one on each side. And then they'll have the super upgraded versions with the Damascus, the raindrop and the ladder. It'll have the gold lugs and the wood inlays. That's all great. There's a whole bunch of different versions, including unique versions. In fact, I will include some links down there, my GP Knives link, so you guys can go check this knife out for yourself. Uh, depending on when you're watching this video, they may or may not be in stock, so check those out if you want to see. Anyways, typical bead blasted titanium I think looks nice. This will pick up snail trails, which I actually prefer. For anybody who doesn't know, Sabenza literally means work, so if you're afraid that this knife is for whatever reason, too delicate to go out and use, it's not. These knives have been around for a very long time, uh, created by the person who invented the frame lock and also brought S30V and S35VN to the table. This design has remained largely unchanged for so long, and that's not because, you know, necessarily, it's not necessarily just based on the stubbornness of the person who designed it. It's because the design is great and it works, and there's so much proof out there that 
it's really difficult to argue with. Yes, you can go out and use these. Yes, you can beat on them. They'll pick up snail trails. In my opinion, they look better with the wear marks on them. That's just my opinion, but that is a product of, uh, or, or that is the result of bead blasting. So that's going to be the case. The blade is beautiful. It's completely sterile. Uh, one, of, one of the best examples of a drop point blade out there. And I also love the Chris Reeve tumbling, the fine grain structure and the slight reflectivity. It's just fantastic. You won't find a single flaw anywhere on this knife, but the blade emphasizes that I think better, excuse me, I bumped the camera, better than any other part of the knife. The crown is, uh, or, uh, the, the spine is crowned, which is a small detail that people have always appreciated about Chris Reeve knives. And like I said, it's sterile up here. So you see the Chris Reeve uh, or the Reeve knives logo right there. And then the Idaho made down here. The company is now operated by his son, Tim Reeve, and his wife, or his ex-wife, Ann Reeve. For whatever reason, people think that there's a lot of drama associated with that. There's not. So if you hear rumors of drama, this no. It's people talking and they, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Chris Reeve still um, sort of is, is, I guess for lack of a better term, on standby to offer um, you know, advice and, um, just basically his experience where, where it's needed. Um, and so he is in, in some ways still involved with the company, but just not in its, you know, the, the, the running, I guess the main running of it is, is mainly Tim and Ann Reeve. That's the way I understand it. Um, like I said, these knives are super easy to disassemble. They come with a variety of different things, including the tool to disassemble it. They come with a cleaning rag, the grease that you put on the inside of the washers. Um, and the washers are the oversized, uh, washers, which create that, sort of glassy smooth action. I wouldn't call it friction, it's just what creates the hydraulic action of the knife. Uh, Ryan didn't send those, but that, that is the case with these guys, it's about the same. Um, like I said, no alignment hole, so that's great. Everything's nicely rounded off all the way around. Some additional chamfering apparently, like I said, on this guy, um, so that's great. Um, stop pin still in the same place. Back here, this uh, standoff is still in the same place. Um, they still come with lanyards. I mentioned in a large 31 review that this bead came with it. That's not, this is actually a special bead. Ryan, let me know, or a special lanyard. The lanyards can't be removed unless you take the knife completely apart or just snip it. But if you feel like you want to do that, you can because you can get another lanyard. You know, for people wondering like, if I snip that lanyard, is it going to reduce the value if I want to sell it on the secondary market? No, because <laughs> you can get another lanyard and an actual like Chris Reeve lanyard for these guys and in various styles. So that's, that's fine. You can do whatever you want. Ryan uh, opted to have a lanyard on his, so I'm going to leave that be. Obviously, that'd be kind of crappy for me to cut that off and be like, here's your knife back. <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, everything looks nice down here. Um, the uh, pocket clip, like I said, is hanging in a slightly different position. It's just a single um, uh, screw here, and then there's a pocket milled into the titanium. Um, like I said, you can get a left-handed version of this, so it really doesn't matter that there's only one carry position for this particular knife with its pocket clip. Um, the other side is much the same as the front, as the front, except for the fact that it's got the titanium frame lock, which now has the addition of this the ceramic ball interface, which is the same locking system that they use on the Nkosi and the uh, Unum Zon. You can see there up at the top, there's that little ceramic ball that acts as the detent ball and the interface. What does that do? Well, it's roughly the same idea as the steel lock bar insert in terms of wear over time. It's not something that's easily removed or changed out or as easy to remove or change out as a steel lock bar insert. But the ceramic ball is like super hard. Is it is it 80 Rockwell or higher? Anyways, the interaction between it and the steel tang creates for um, a surface that is, in theory, going to keep slippage um, to a minimum or down low, um, and then your uh, your actual wear over time will be reduced. Uh, Sabenza knives or, or Chris Reeve knives always look like they're locking up later than they actually are. You can actually see in the tang here that where the ball is interacting is well, it's a little bit late. It's looking at something like possibly 60% or so, 65%, but you know, that's fine. I, I've never actually seen a Chris Reeve knife where the, the lock has worn all the way over. So that's not something that I would really be concerned with. I think that's it for the aesthetics. As far as the aesthetics go, uh, A plus. I love how these look. Ergonomics, you know, surprisingly on the little guy, I can still get my hand all the way around it. And I'm not having to run up here on this tip. I can actually get my hands all the way around down here. So I always thought the Sabenza, uh, the small Sabenza would be too small for me. No, it's actually a wonderful EDC size knife. Um, and on top of that, I still feel like it's it's nearly as capable um, and it's it feels nearly as robust as the large one. It's just not as long. Um, in fact, I think the thickness, and like I said, thickness of blade is about the same, but I, I wonder if the titanium scales are also 
is the same. No, the, the small one is just a little bit thinner. The blade stock's about the same. So that's nice. You gain the benefit, the carry benefit there. Not that the large one's hard to carry either. A lot of good here. A lot of good. And the other nice thing is that these are priced a little bit less than the large ones. These are about $375. I have no problem with that. Blade steel in the sky is S35VN. S35VN. Uh, this is S35VN VN made by the guy who designed the knife. I mean, or at least S35VN was invented or it was uh, the, the main person who helped bring it to the table was Chris Reeve. The idea being he wanted to keep similar edge retention uh, to S30V, but uh, make it easier to grind. And they accomplished that. Um, here, recent testing has proved that S30V, if it's heat treated exactly the same in the exact same geometry, is a little bit better than S35VN, but you gain some additional toughness. And S35VN, I can say for the most part, at least in my experience, is definitely easier to sharpen. I prefer S35VN on knives that I'm gonna really beat on where I really want stainless properties. I've said in the past that I thought S35VN might be the, the toughest stainless steel. And actually I should rephrase what I think there. What I mean is, is I think it has the best ratio of stainlessness to toughness qualities. I could still be wrong there, um, but it is not the toughest stainless steel. In any case, it is a very tough stainless steel and I think it's very much appropriate for a knife in this price range, especially considering um, that these are mega high-end production knives that are made in the United States and have hand tuning, assembly, things like that, and the tolerances are amazing. Um, so yeah, this is a great knife. Now, um, recently there have been some rumors and talk of lock rock issues on these guys, and I'm gonna address that here real quick. Um, the large Sebenza 31 that I received from, these are both brand new, by the way, that I received from Ryan has no blade play up, down, left, or right. That's always been the case with every Chris Reeve knife that I have ever handled. And I checked it after, and I just automatically assumed, I was like, well, these guys, they're always solid. So I checked that one after I had heard about this. Then I checked this guy, and lo and behold, there's an ever so slight amount of vertical blade play or lock rock on this guy. Now, here's an irrational reaction to that. Anybody who's immediately thinking, I'm swearing off Chris Reeve knives, um, Chris Reeve's lack of involvement with a company is clearly leading to um, you know, less care in tolerances. Don't, don't, that is not the way that you should respond to that. Um, I looked into this. I had somebody who messaged me on Instagram and said, I had this problem, what should I do? I said, you should message them directly and get a response from them. And um, I'm not gonna say quote, you know, word for word exactly how they responded, but basically what they said was, is in some circumstances, a slight amount of slip is normal. And this kind of surprised me. Um, so here's what I'm gonna say to you guys. This is um, not obviously not the case in some of them because the 31 I've got right here has no blade play, but I'm gonna always be honest with you guys and tell you if I feel something like this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, you know, like my, my opinion on the ZT knives deal with the disengagement. I've never experienced that, so I'm not gonna tell you guys that I've experienced that. This knife does not feel like it's slipping in a way. When I feel a slippage, it eventually stops, meaning I don't feel like I can keep pushing on this and it's gonna disengage. Whether or not that is absolutely considered normal is something you need to check with them about. Uh, because it might have to do with individual circumstances. They might have additional questions leading up to that, that, that thing. You know, that it might, might be, you know, something that they want to talk with you about. And, and, you know, in some situations, it might be that they want you to send it back. It might be more of a problem, you know, than, than the, the issue that I'm, I'm feeling right here. So 100% of the time, you should not react in a dumpster fire way. Um, to this video and, and start spreading it. You, if you have the knife and you're experiencing that, you should contact them. That being said, um, we live in an age, you know, the knife world where there are, um, you know, we, we have uh, come to expect um, uh, no up and down blade play with knives in this price range. Why? Because reviewers of the past and people who, you know, use their knives and, and then talk about it on their experiences on, on YouTube and share with everybody or on blade forms or wherever, um, there's a um, pretty, you know, solid correlation between absolutely solid uh, lockup and um, a decreased wear over time and, and uh, safe performance, right? Um, so it might actually be the case that a micro amount of lock slip on this guy is completely safe and it's just, it's just the end result of adding the ceramic ball interface to this knife. However, the fact that Chris Reeve makes, or the Chris Reeve knives makes other designs that have the ceramic ball interface that don't have lock slip issues, and I've got a 31 right here that's also not having any issues, tells me that I really don't want to see that in there. You know, whether or not, you know, it's 100% it's, it's safe, obviously I want it to be 100% safe, but I also feel like it should be absolutely solid. 
If they can get it right on some of them, they should be able to get it right on all of them, especially considering Chris Reeve Knives has had the reputation for getting everything 100% perfect since, you know, the dawn of the Sabenza's conception, right? So I'm not complaining. I'm just in a, I'm, I'm, I'm in a hard spot because I want to tell you guys the truth and I want to tell you guys exactly how I feel. If it were me, I'd say, I really want a version of this knife that doesn't have that, right? Um, so if that's not going to happen, then I, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to send it back. You know, um, so deal with the situation how you see fit. But uh, again, I, I, I don't want to, I feel like no matter what I'm adding, if, if there's drama associated with this, but this is my exact experience between the two that I've handled, the large did not have any play. The small did have play, no matter what the circumstance is. If you're just somebody who's not buying the knives, you've never considered buying the knives, you've never spent money in this price range, then, you know, you, you can, yeah, you can leave a comment if you want, but it's not really affecting you, right? If you own one of these and you are experiencing this, you are the people who it is affecting. So you should decide, you know, you, you'll have to make the decision for yourself. My recommendation is contact them. Let them tell you. Don't listen to people in the YouTube comments section or people, you know, on Blade Forms. Go get the answer directly from Chris Reeve Knives and see if your knife has an actual issue. That would be my recommendation. Um, I feel like no matter what, I've, I've accidentally added drama to the situation. It's a great knife. Um, can I recommend it? It's, it's, it's hard because I, it's like, well, if this one has a lock rock, I don't know. Um, I mean, yeah, if, if you get one of these, you know, without lock rock, then you're good to go. But is it worth rolling the dice on? I don't know. I don't know. Um, this is one of those things where I kind of want to sit back on, you know, and say that, um, you're going to have to make that call for yourself for the, for the time being, I really do love this knife, but I'm not going to put it in my recommended knives playlist because I'm not really sure how to respond to this situation. So I, I can't, I can't like openly recommend it if it is a known potential issue with these knives and I've got one right in front of me that's got it. So that's, that's how I'm going to end this review. I love the knife. I think the changes are warranted, but I, I want that to not be a thing. I mean, like if like 0.01% of them had a little bit of slip, it's understandable, but you know, apparently enough have slip that people are talking about it. So not going to be completely recommended, but we'll see what the future holds and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. So anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do around like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.